In this section, we are going to discuss when a linear programming is infeasible. And also we are going to discuss how we can reformulate this infeasible problem and make it feasible again. In this section, uh, we show how a linear programming uh, problem can be infeasible. This means that there is no solution that can satisfy all the constraints of the problem. And again, an infeasible linear programming problem presents an opportunity to improve the linear programming formulation. So what is the, the new business condition that our data scientist uh, has? Essentially, the, our data scientist receives a memo from the CEO of the furniture problem saying that the new board of directors of the company requires that at least a revenue of $4,500 uh, per week needs to be generated. So let's see what uh, geometrically, uh, what this new constraint that the board of director is imposing uh, means. So remember, uh, the, 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 the LP formulation of the furniture problem without the board of director constraint was represented by this uh, region, green region, that is the feasible solution. Now, we have this constraint that the total revenue that uh, we need to generate should be at least uh, $4,500 per week. So as we know, um, the total revenue that we can generate will be the revenue that we generate by building chairs plus the total revenue that we generate by building tables. And this should be at least equal to $4,500. Uh, so if we graph the equation associated with the board of director constraint, we will get this uh, black line. So the direction of feasibility, uh, since this is greater or equal, is this direction uh, defined by the red arrow that we have here. And we put it in, in red because this constraint, the, the, the points that are feasible for this constraint are here. And the feasible region defined by the other constraint is here. So this means that there is no way that with this capacity of 400 units of mahogany and 450 units of labor, we can generate this amount of revenue. So let's see how Gurobi will handle this problem that is infeasible. So what we are going to do is going to define a new parameter uh, that will define the, um, the minimum amount of revenue that the board of director is asking us to, to have per week. So this, uh, this parameter is going to be called mean ref and is going to be equal to $4,500. Uh, also, uh, we need to add a new constraint. The new constraint basically needs to, uh, to define that the total revenue uh, generated by the production plan should be at least the minimum uh, revenue that the board director requires. For this purpose, we use the add constraints method. And this constraint is going to be stored in the object that we call mean profit constraint. And uh, essentially, is going to be defined as the objective function. That's the linear term, uh, the, the linear expression that we have. And this should be greater or equal than the mean revenue parameter that we just defined here. And the name of this constraint is going to be B. So how we do this in, 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 well, basically we have defined that code. So we just want to check if Gurobi has properly captured uh, the new model. So the objective function is going to remain the same. It's the total revenue that we can generate by building tables and chairs. And uh, we have two constraints, one related to the mahogany constraint and the other one related to the um, uh, labor constraint. And we have this new constraint uh, that is defined by the board of directors, that the name is B. 
And basically, in the left-hand side, we have the revenue that we can generate based on the production plan, and we are saying that this total revenue should be at least uh, $4,500, uh, and we don't have any bounds. So, Gurobi has properly captured the problem. Now, we are going to use the optimized uh, method uh, to solve this new problem, and Gurobi started working on this problem, and in 0 0.03 seconds said, hey, your problem either is infeasible or unbounded. I, I, I don't have a solution that I can display. So basically, it will, doesn't have anything to print because there is no optimal solution that Gurobi found. So now what we are going to do is to check if, uh, uh, if the problem is either uh, infeasible or unbounded. And for that, we use this argument to display. If this argument is true, then we are going to say uh, the LP problem is either infeasible or unbounded, which is the case here. So uh, the Gurobi API is going to print LP problem is either infeasible or unbounded. And then uh, we are going to print that we are going to check if the problem is feasible. And to check if the problem is feasible, we are going to create an objective function that uh, is a quite kind of general, zero. Meaning that just find me any optimal solution, any corner point that you can find, uh, uh, please find one solution that is feasible and display that one. Um, so we use the set objective method and the linear expression that we are going to have is zero, meaning an arbitrary um, uh, objective function, and we are going to try to maximize uh, that, that objective function. And we use the optimized uh, method to solve this problem, and when Gurov is trying to find any solution in the feasible region, Gurobi says, oops, I cannot find any solution. So now I declare that your problem is infeasible. Because when I have an arbitrary objective function, so I can look at any vertices or uh, any vertice of the, of the polyhedron, I couldn't find any, any solution. So your problem should be infeasible. So now we can check if the argument GRB status uh, infeasible is true. And then if that happened, then we say the LP problem is proven to be infeasible. So that's how Gurovi will detect that the problem uh, has been infeasible and report uh, that uh, we have proven that the uh, problem is infeasible. So let's, let, 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 let's see um, what is happening uh, when, when the data scientist uh, detects that this problem is infeasible. And she has a meeting with, with the board of directors, and she knows that she cannot, cannot go back with the board of directors and say, hey, your constraint is infeasible. So basically, the data science, scientist, based on the formulation of the LP problem, knows that the source of infeasibility is because uh, we have limited capacity. So she said, well, if I can get extra capacity of mahogany and extra capacity of labor, then I might be able to meet the, the, the constraint uh, defined by the board of directors. So basically what she does is to talk with the supplier of mahogany and the labor union and uh, basically, they ag agree to increase the supply at a cost. So uh, an extra unit of mahogany will cost $20, and one hour of overtime will cost $30. So she, she basically de decides to reformulate the problem and considering this new cost of adding extra capacity. So. To do, to do this, basically, she will define uh, a new cost that she's going to call it extra cost, define it over the set of resources that will be the cost of adding mahogany and the cost of adding labor. And then she will define a decision variable that she's going to call extra, 
that this extra, uh, this decision variable called extra will define the extra capacity that we need to have of each type of resources in such a way that we can meet the, um, the board of directors constraint. And the, the model is reformulated as, as follows. So basically what the, she's going to define as the objective function is the, the gross margin defined by the total revenue that you can generate by the production plan of, uh, of making chairs and tables. And she's going to subtract the extra cost uh, uh, that you are going to incur based on the extra capacity that you are going to have uh, uh, added to the regular capacity in order to meet demand. And then in, in, in your capacity constraint, basically you are going to use the variable extra capacity to uh, add capacity to re the regular capacity that you have. And in, in this particular case, you have two types of uh, decision variables. The make variables that tell us how much product you are going to build and the extra capacity of each resource that you need to add uh, in order to make this problem feasible. So how do you do this? So the new information of extra cost, you are going to use the multi uh, function defined over the set of resources. And then you have a new argument called extra cost. And for the mahogany uh, resource, you know that the capacity is 400 units and the extra cost of adding capacity is going to be $20. For the labor resource, you know that the capacity is $450 and the extra cost is going to be uh, $30. And you need to create a new uh, variable that we, uh, is going to be stored in, in, in an object called extra. And you use the adverse method defined over the set of resources, which has this information related to the extra cost. And uh, in the resource constraint, basically you are going to use the add constraint method. You will have um, in the left hand side, basically you will have the total consumption of resource R derived from the production plan um, that you have. And then you are going to include the extra va variable in such a way that you can increase uh, the capacity at the proper level to make the problem feasible. And uh, in the objective function, basically you are going to maximize the gross margin defined by the total revenue that you can define based on the production plan. And then you are going to subtract the, the cost of adding capacity to the regular capacity that you have uh, already in such a way that you can meet the, uh, the board of director uh, constraint. So again, we are going to use the right method to verify that Gurobi has the proper model in memory. So uh, the objective function should be maximizing gross margin and gross margin in this particular case is going to be the total revenue that you can generate based on the production plan that you have and then you are going to subtract the extra cost of adding capacity of mahogany and adding capacity of labor. And the constraints for uh, mahogany and labor are going to include the decision variable extra mahogany, such a way that you can increase the capacity available and the extra, uh, you are going to include the extra labor decision variable in such a way that you can modify and add capa labor capacity to your model. And then you will have also the board, of, uh, the board of directors constraint that says that the total revenue that you generate should be at least $4,500. Uh, uh, no bounds. So basically, Gurobi has been able to capture the, the new model formulation that the data scientist has defined. So you use the optimized method to um, uh, solve this problem and boom, we'll always say, hey, I found, I found an optimal solution. And then you print the optimal solution 
And basically, the optimal solution says, OK, we are not going to build any table. We are going to build 100 chairs. We are going to need 100 units of extra mahogany and 555 hours of labor, of extra labor, in such a way that we can meet the constraint of the board of directors. But see what is happening. Now the company will lose $14,000 because the need of uh, satisfying the board of director constraints. So it seems that uh, this constraint that the board of director uh, imposed, trying to be very greedy in terms of generating revenue, was a bad idea because to generate the extra capacity to build, uh, to have a production plan that re generates that revenue, the cost of adding extra capacity is going to overcome the, the revenue that can be generated. So, in summary, uh, let's uh, make some remarks about uh, model status. It is a, a good modeling uh, practice that the LP problem is well characterized. This means that when the data of the LP problem satisfy the modeling assumption, the, the LP problem has an optimal solution. That is, the, the LP problem should never be infeasible if you have the, the right data. Try to should never be unbounded and uh, avoid alternative solutions. So how you can do that? So to avoid infeasibilities, you can add artificial variables to the constraints that might lead to infeasibility, like in the board of director constraint, and then having a high penalty to, to, to those artificial variables in such a way that you only incur in this, uh, in this penalty when there is no other way that your problem uh, is, is feasible. And ideally, uh, when you, if you are going to add variables, they shouldn't be artificial, uh, as the data scientists did. They really say, hey, the problem was capacity, and I can get extra capacity at the cost. So this was not an artificial variable. This really was a variable that has business meaning and allows you to reformulate the problem in a business term that is understood by business people. And to avoid that the problem is unbounded, uh, basically what you can do is to, for each of your decision variables, you define an upper bound. Because, because realistically, there is no decision variable that can have an ar uh, arbitrarily large uh, uh, decision. Uh, bound on, on, on it. So you define bounds on each of the decision variable. And uh, to a problem that has a, a alternative solution, basically what you can do is to define an objective, another objective that will try to filter the multiple al alternative solution that, that you have and try to get uh, one, one solution of your problem. So you can add more more objectives in such a way that you start filtering the alternative solution and you get uh, a solution that satisfy or optimize several objectives. So uh, in this section, basically, we have uh, explained how to deal with infeasibility, how this infeasibility might lead to improve the formulation of the problem and how to formulate uh, the new problem. So, Thank you very much. That's all that I have to say in this section. See you next time.